Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Glamorous One session in Rappaport Hall. If you weren't planning on being in the Rappaport Hall, we hope you stay anyway. Uh, so we're going to start off with the State of Glam DC uh, by Katie, Sarah, and Samuel. And uh, we'll just go ahead and get right into it. All right. So I I'm Katie, user odd, and I'm the president of the Wiki Society of DC. We're, yay, thank you. Um, and there's a bun bunch of our people are here today, and we're like seeking and uh, have applied to become a chapter so we can do more glamorous like work. Uh, so, but I'm here to tell you about our glam projects and how we got to like where we are today. And to say like firstly like like we have a like broader idea of glam like like not just like galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, what it stands for but also like historical societies. And in DC, like we're rich with like governmental institutions and I, I would consider like, like that we need to outreach to like, like more than just GLAM, but like GLAM's like, like a big part of DC also. And like our, our group, like we've like been around like doing meetups since 2005, like meeting like, like for the first few, first few years, it was just social meeting at like usually the pizza place in the train station and drinking beers and eating and socializing. But that after like a few years, I was like, well, like, like it's time for us to like start doing more than just like, I mean, that's still like, we still want to do that. But so our first like contact with the museums in Washington was in 2009, February, the Wikipedia Loves Art project which like took place in New York and around the world and we were like we want to do that in DC so it's at the Smithsonian American Art Museum like so so, so like this is like one of like the beautiful like images and then in like January 2010 like well like for all our meetups we never had really more than 20 people but got this idea like one of our Wikipedians works at the Library of Congress and I was like well like would you like give us a tour and it was like uh, unbelievable, like 60 people showed up, including like 15 students from like a few hours away. And it was like, we overwhelmed him, like poor, like, like, but he was very gracious and like showed us around the library. And, and so it's like, that's when I knew it's like, if we organize stuff like that, that there's like great interest in doing like glam type collaborations and just like, like doing stuff in DC, like we want to do stuff. And, so then, in, um, well, like last June, Liam was a Wikipedian in residence at the British Museum, and the Smithsonian was like, well, like, like how do we get a Wikipedian in residence? And so um, last, like, June 2010, Alex organized, like, a meetup there, like, at the Nas National Museum of the American Indian, where we could get acquainted with them, and they could, like, get to know us, and just see, like, talk about what, how we might work together. And, then in August, we held a workshop for about like 20 of their staff, teaching them uh, like just the basics of like editing Wikipedia. And then like poor Alex like went back to school, like it was like a few hours away, so he wasn't really around. And then he went to the UK, so it was really like, like left the glam projects to like other people to pick up. And so it was like, so like one of, one of the people who attended the workshop, she works at the um, Archives of American Art, and I, I, I'm interested in art in um, the Smithsonian American Art Museum, which is fabulous. They were having an ex upcoming exhibition featuring the work of Le Alexis Rockman, and I was like, well, his article is like a few like sentences. It sucks, and I'm um, like, we could make it better, and then like in time for like when the exhibition opens, like in a few months. So like like I got back in touch with. Um, Sarah Snyder at the Archives of American Art and like kept kept going like this collaboration as like best as I could with Alex and and so then I got like I like applied for like money from the Wikimedia Foundation to go down to like Texas where like for the Museum Computer Network conference where I got to meet a lot more folks from DC. You have to go to Texas to like meet them. Uh, but like continue to build, build our ties like with the glam community in DC and as well like outside of like DC across the United States like we know a lot of people now and have a lot of friends and it's a lot of like potential and like aside from the Smithsonian stuff this was back like July 2010 I got involved with a project called Fedflix which is spearheaded by Carl Malamud who's like been a big advocate of open government like um, got like the SEC like like 
like it's like st stock information online back in like 1994, which is like amazing. Uh -uh. Got it? Like, because everything that, that our federal government does in the United States is public domain, so like it should just be out there for the people, and no one should like sell it. Like, well, they can sell it; they're free too. But like, the government shouldn't be like selling stuff, and like, or like just they should make it all available online, and that's like what he believes and what we believe. And so this was in. November 2009, he, the, we have an agency called the National Technical Information Service, and they have like reports and videos and all, all sorts of stuff that like you can order. And so like he like arranged with them where like they would send him like these are like like a lot of like Betamax tapes, and he would like transcribe them onto like like modern technology and put them on the Internet Archive, so like like the public domain, like people should have them. And didn't stop there, then um, like the National Archives is like treasure trove of like tens of millions, I, I don't know, like like the like crazy number of like, like records, but they also have a motion pictures like department. And this was like back in the, like, this was a few years ago, like they entered into a partnership with Amazon where like Amazon.com could come like to the archives, like scan or digitize like videos. And then, then you see like, down here, like that, like the archives would tell people, like instead of like, oh, like we don't have the video, or like the only way you can get the video is to order it from our partner Amazon, or you can also come to College Park, Maryland, and like look at it. But like they like it's like an endorsement of like Amazon as the only way you can get this like public domain stuff without coming to Maryland, and so you can get it for 10.95. And Carl had this idea; it was around the holidays, so like here. You can set up a wish list, so he set up a wish list of like all, all these videos, like a few hundred or I don't know, like thou thousand, and people quickly like like filled the orders, and like they all these videos got sent to Carl, and he put them on the Internet Archives and as well on onto YouTube, and so I mean like there there's still like a lot like that like not on Amazon, but like that, that's at the National Archives. And so that you can go to College Park and you can, um, like, the rules are you can uh, uh, digitize or copy, like, six DVDs and take them home with you and whatever you want to do with that. And, like, he made arrangements with the archives. Well, okay, like, we can have an exception to the rule. We can copy as many as we want. So you see here, so this, like, then, then they, they'll send them all out to Carl in California and he, like, uploads them to, like, the Internet Archives. And... So like we've been doing that, like a group of volunteers in the DC area like have been going like there like like period periodically on Saturdays, like spending an afternoon like like getting the stuff digitized and on online. And, and it's not just from the archives, like it's called Fedflix. So like these are like he like also like knows people at the Pentagon and the Pentagon like sent him all, all these like DVDs and a lot of like materials as well, which is public domain. And so on the internet archives and I was like, well, like a video like this about the Hoover Dam, like we have a featured article about the Hoover Dam and this talks about like the building of the dam and it would be great to have like materials like this on Wikipedia. So I was like, well, like what can we do? Like form a wiki project and like figure out how to do that. And you see over here, like this video is 122 megabytes. Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons only allows up to 100 megabytes, or you can go bug the developers and, and like get around that in some cases. But really, like you can only do up to 100 megabytes. But like I, I've been looking through, like now we have like about like 7,000 videos that that are on the Internet Archives, and it's like, well, some of these are like smaller than 100 megabytes. And this one is Long Lines. It's um, back in the early 1950s. This was like a watch company that sponsored a, is a 15-minute television program. It's like if like if you're familiar with American television at all, we have a show called Meet the Press that's on nowadays, like to talk about politics every like weekend. But this was like that. So politicians would come on 15 minutes and talk and. Like, I was like, well, these guys have, like, articles on Wikipedia. They're important. And, like, we don't have, like, pictures of them because, like, like, they would otherwise be copyright. But there's about, like, four, four or five hundred of these, like, like, that the archives has and, like, that we're digitizing and that we can get on Wikipedia. And so, like, we're doing that. And then on Wikipedia, like, there's been a lot of work done to, like, like 
integrate like open source or open video like technology and, and this is a, like, there's a project called universal subtitles where you where you can uh, transcribe videos and then translate them into German, Hebrew, or whatever. And like one of the developers, Michael Dale, has like worked on integrating that into Common. So it's like it's right now it's available as a gadget and it still has like some bugs, but like like hopefully like this will like be default like at some time. And so like we've that not we've done like videos but not just videos. We tried like a little like project like trying like to scan some photographs from the State Department. And here's Carl and and there's David Fer David Ferrier, the National Archivist, and he, even he he got into like scanning. I'm like, yay. And 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 he's like been like really awesome, like like allowing like okay, well like the rules are this, but like we we need to be open, like the archives needs to be open and do that, like whatever, like break the rules, like allows to us and scan uh, unlimited DVDs and and so like like this was back in November, so like like he like heard about like Liam and this Wikipedia and resident thing and. They have a whole social media program, but it was like, well, how, how do we work with Wikipedia? And the 10th anniversary was coming up in January, so I was like, well, we want to host like a meetup, and I was like, well, like, let's host our Wiki 10 event at the National Archives. So like, we held a, a day-long symposium, so it was like, like the archives like, gave like, talks, like their staff and the Wikipedians gave talks in the afternoon. And so, like, we got to learn, like, what, what each other does. And they also, like, gave us a behind-the-scenes tour, and we had, like, cupcakes. Um, and, like, got to meet Sarah for the first time. And I was like, oh, my God, like, this person who's, like, all into art and museums. And I'm like, we need, we need, like, this person, like, to help us. And uh, there were other people, in, like, who, like, turned out for the first time and wanted to do glam stuff. And, and that's, like, great for building our community. And we also had trivia. And... So then, then we, we talked, continue to talk with archives. So let's get a Wikipedian in residence there. And so like through the internship program, we, they were able to like make that happen. And that's Dominique McDevitt Park, Parks, who couldn't be here, but um, like he's a Wikipedian in residence for the summer. And like some of the things he's done is like the National Archives, like I guess like Ansel Adams was commissioned by the, the, the government to photograph, so like, they, they have all this public domain, Ansel Adams photography that, that um, like in, the, in the catalog, the way it is now, like, it's not available like, online or only the resolution, but they have like, high resolution stuff on their network or on hard drives, and like, Dominic got this like, uploaded. And also they have a today's document thing so people can write articles. And um, people have developed tools like to make it easier to like grab the metadata and like, like create templates on Commons and like Multichill Mart Martin has written like a bot like so like Dominic can use this and now he's got like 123,000 high resolution tips that like, he's working on uploading now and and this is like one of this this is Charlie Chaplin like back in I think 1918 and. There's also Wikisource and like other ways to get involved with their archives like project. And like not only at the National Archives, but we also have a Wikipedian resident, Sarah at the Archives of American Art. And like since she's here, like I don't want to talk about that. I'll let her talk about it. Yeah, you're doing cool stuff, so. I am doing cool stuff. Um, can I take this off for a second? Yeah. Is that okay? I think I don't know. Okay, never mind. So um I'm sorry, I'm too short, I can't deal with that. Um, I'm Sarah Sturch, I'm the Wikipedian in residence at the Archives of American Art, and um, I will be getting this microphone so I can have my TED Talk fantasy and walk around with it. Um, yes, excellent, thank you. Um, so I'm the Wikipedian in residence at the Smithsonian um, Archives of American Art, but I serve the Smithsonian Institution as a whole. The Smithsonian Institution is in a way, the United States Museum. We have 19 museums, one zoo, the National Zoo, and nine research facilities internationally. Um, a lot of glam and a lot of work. So um, I have uh, been lucky enough to work within the Archives of American Art, which has the world's largest holdings of archival material related to American art. I'm getting tweeted here, my butt is vibrating, pardon me. Um, I just, I just, <laughs> I heard that boop, 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 and I went, oh. 
I just got tweeted. Um, anyway, so, so some of the work that we're doing um, at the Smithsonian, specifically at the Archives of American Art, my, my primary goal is as an outreach person. You'll learn more about Wikipedians of Residence if you haven't heard about us already this week. Um, we're doing backstage passes, which involve Wikipedians who are regionally interested in American art history and who want to write articles about American art history to come to the archives. We hosted 10 of them, um, gave them a tour, showed them amazing uh, pieces and objects from the collection, as you see here. And uh, we've been writing articles about the Armory Show of 1913, which, if you're familiar with art history, pretty much changed the face of modern art um, internationally. So uh, my, my goal at the Smithsonian is to have all the various institutions get together and work with GLAM uh, to bring information about their collections and content uh, to Wikipedia. And right now I'm, I'm working with the Archives of American Art, Smithsonian Magazine, who has a, a remarkable resource of secondary sources, um, the Smithsonian Affiliates, who has relationships with over 120 different museums, um, which will allow us to have a really epic platform to work with 120 other American museums. And um, uh, this fall will be at the National Museum of the American Indian, where I will be uh, working to help bring indigenous coverage and outreach to indigenous American communities um, regarding Wikipedia, which I'll be speaking about on Saturday. So that's a little bit of my work. Thank you. All right, and so like last Friday, so last Friday was like the backstage pass at the Smithsonian and, and the, the weekend before we like, like we served like the DC area, but also like Maryland and Virginia and West Virginia and stuff like that. So like Baltimore is an hour away. It's like a like pretty large city. And, and we have contacts with the historical preservation group, so like, he like organized a meetup in Baltimore. It was a, it was 106 degrees Fahrenheit. We did a, it's like I don't know in Celsius, it's ridiculous hot, uh, 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 but we did a happy hour, and it was I was like amazed. It was like 20, 30 people came to happy hour, and then the next morning, a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Like no Wikipedian wants to get up early on a Saturday, but we had I think it was like 15 or 20. Like it was with like Glam staff and um, Sarah, Dominic, uh, myself. Um, went up there and we talked about uh, like how we can work together and it was at the Walters Art Museum which ha it features a, a, it's like mostly ancient or it's like like not nothing modern art so it's like no, there's no copyright issues and like the art's owned by the city of Baltimore and they, they view okay well like they, that's public domain and they're redoing their like their website they're like their um so like when, when that happens in the next few months, they're gonna, they wanna upload like thousands of images of our art to Wikimedia Commons. So we're gonna help them do that. And in the fall, we're gonna do a Wikipedia Takes Baltimore to like, for like to go around and photograph and document historic sites in, in the city. And, and if SJ wants to say anything, um, like, SJ is like comes down to DC a lot, and, and he um, is involved in the Digital Public Library of America project. Come, come, you can talk better than I can. Thanks, Kitty. So we, there was this awesome meeting that we had about a month and a half ago with a group that was that was sponsoring. That was the meeting. Um, it, the, the room was actually larger, and it was just as empty. There was, uh, it, it was a meeting of a bunch of funders and librarians from across the country who wanted to change the, uh, the notion of libraries. And they wanted to make something for the US that was at least as cool as the pan-European library and museum projects, and that provided access to all the knowledge that was in these libraries, university and public libraries, to everyone, whether or not they had an, an affiliation. And they were also thinking about creative ways to move beyond physical library space. Uh, or, or to move beyond the idea of having to own collections as the defining role of a library. And we, so a lot of the discussion ended up being about creation. And I was there representing Wikipedia because they wanted ideas about how they could have libraries become centers for innovative knowledge work, for people to build knowledge that would be part of, uh, of um, collections in the future. And so this summer there was a beta sprint for lots of awesome ideas. Anyone who had an idea that could be part of this future Library of America, uh, and everyone was debating whether it should actually be America or the world, whether it should be a library or some other term, was working for the next three months through September to show a working model of something that could be implemented everywhere. 
And one of, the, one of the discussions we had was, how do you get people to create? Librarians might be a, afraid of technology or they're not used to, they've, they've done this a little bit once or twice, they don't know how to teach other people how to do it. And someone proposed having a, having a working space where people who are library ambassadors could come and show other people how to use great tools, show them how to digitize work, show them how to publish to places like Wikisource, and show them how to engage with existing communities online who were acting as curators, who were acting as digital librarians, uh, whether they were whether amateur or professional. And there was so much enthusiasm in the room. There were you know, 10 or 12 people said, our library would do this. We don't know what it looks like, but we'd do it. So I talked to Wiki Society of DC and said, do you guys think we could do this in DC, maybe? And there's gonna be a follow-up meeting. And, uh, and we said, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll find someone who wants to do this. And, and one of the people involved got the DC Public Library to commit some space. And this is a room on their first floor looking out onto the street. This is the MLK Library in downtown DC, uh, just across from the Smithsonian Art Museum, and uh, the, the American Art Museum. And uh, this is, you know, they gave us 1,200 square feet and they said, you can have this space and you can do whatever you want with it for five or six months. We're gonna tear it down at the end of the year. But we will make a pop-up tech lab and we'll hold a meeting and we'll get some staff who are interested. Um, so, so far we've gotten a great, a, some great responses and we expect that, that we're going to start getting, running sessions there that would otherwise be, you know, like we, we Wiki need Academies. Space. We need space and now we have space. Uh, space and, and, and professional, professional help. I mean, we had this meeting with 13 or with 14 of their staff yeah. and, and someone from the National Archives, mm -hmm. so. All right. And so we formed the Wiki Society of DC to help facilitate uh, that, as well as like organize Wikimania next year. So, which will have a big glam, like like it's not just glam, but like that'll be a big part of it. And want you guys to all come. Thank you. Thank you, Katie and Sarah and uh, SJ. So up next we have actually uh, Martin Damas from the State of the Glam in the Netherlands, and uh, we'll go ahead and. Uh, move right on. We'll have questions at the end. So, can you hear me? Don't leave us. So, um, my name is uh, Maarten Dammers. You might might know me as a user MultiChill. Uh, I'm going to talk about all the projects we did uh, last year, so uh, from last year's Wikimania to now in the Netherlands. Actually, uh, we're mostly use, uh, working in partnerships, so we have these uh, partners where we have good contacts and every once in a while we decide to do uh, a project with them or something cool. And this is the ones we did most of the projects uh, with last year. Uh, first, we have uh, the, the Tropen Museum. Uh, Tropen Museum is actually uh, a long-running uh, project. It started in 2009 already. Uh, it started off with a big donation of uh, uh, 54,000 items, of old photos of uh, Suriname and Indonesia. There, these used to be uh, Dutch colonies, so the Tropen Museum has a huge collection of old uh, archives and photos from that period. And uh, most of them are, uh, or actually all of them are in the public domain, so they just gave us all and uh, have fun. But that wasn't uh, the only thing. Um, actually had uh, digital restoration to photos you see here. The Beamer isn't that good, but if you look them up on the, on the comments, they're re really well dis uh, restored. Uh, this is uh, digital restoration, so for example, the photo on the right, the dancers was really, uh, you know, when you have an old photo, you have these uh, errors on there and, and dots and like uh, chemical problems. Well, it was all cleaned up and one on, of the on the left too. And um, we're now uh, working on co-creation. We tried that uh, last year, but it was uh, small, uh, actually too small. So we're doing now, and uh, we're starting to, uh, to do a new project. It's, uh, the working title is Expeditions. Um, in the 19th century, you had a lot of en expeditions going from Europe to Asia. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, first photographs or making drawings or studying the indigenous people. And these archives are, are scattered all throughout uh, the Netherlands and all throughout Europe. And the plan is to uh, 
pick one expedition uh, every uh, once in a while and then bring together the content and have Wikipedians write about it. And that's probably going to be a wealth of information because you have old photographs, records of travels and journeys and that's going to happen probably in the next couple of months. We also have a project called uh, Open Images. It, in Dutch it's uh, Open Builder. It's a uh, free uh, video platform. Uh, we've been in contact with them for several years. Uh, they promote open video, so they started putting online uh, Polygon newsreels. So uh, in the 40s and the 50s, when you went to new movies, before you saw a movie, there was like a news report because you didn't have television yet. Those uh, Dutch archives are stored at a museum in the Netherlands and they're slowly putting them online on the internet. We uh, copied basically all of them to the comments because they're all uh, very useful for articles and I think uh, about half of all videos we have in the comments right now are actually from an open build. Uh, they try to promote open video as a, as a whole. So uh, they, uh, for example, are going to sponsor us with uh, Wiki Lost Monuments to promote open video. Yay! <laughs> and uh, actually one of the unexpected results from this was uh, People started making stills of videos to be used in Wikipedia articles. I took two of them. I, uh, you have a, a video, a news report, and lots of people in there. And most of the people we don't have any uh, photos of because there are no pro free photos of them. And suddenly we were, uh, we were able to illustrate like hundreds of articles based on a couple of shots uh, at a conference or something like that. Or, you know, uh, the, the government walking on, on to uh, a stage to uh, do a promotion or something. Uh, uh, probably one of our biggest one of last year, uh, and, and National Archief, that's the National Archives of, uh, of the Netherlands, and uh, Spiranstad Photo, that's a commercial photo archive. Um, to get a lot of attention uh, to uh, getting free content online. So, uh, so we talked about this for quite some time and we decided that it would be nice if we could get photographs of politicians who were active from say World War II to the 70s and the 80s. So that's our uh, former Prime Minister, Wim, uh, Wim Kok. Uh, and it, I think this is uh, uh, Laurence Jan Brinkhorst it's, and during a cabinet meeting and he just climbed up and looked inside. And uh, so we provided them a list of politi Dutch politicians of which we didn't have a photograph of yet. And they started browsing their archives looking if they had something and then started scanning them. And we ended up with uh, about a thousand uh, really useful photographs. And um, I think about 800 of them are used and you might think why not all of them because we have some duplicates in there and because uh, people started cropping photographs. If you have a photo of uh, like the, the government, uh, the cabinets, uh, they started cropping all the people out so we can use the, to illustrate articles. That's something we didn't expect. And uh, the, the main thing was a launch event. We had a, in September, we uh, had a big event in Newsport. That's uh, where the Dutch government usually do it's their press conferences. And, uh, and we had all these old politicians, that's the photos at the top, uh, speaking there about their experiences. And the fo photos at the bottom are the old photos, uh, usually uh, somewhere from the, uh, from the 70s. And uh, they still look rather the same, right? Only the, the hair and the glasses. It's, uh. Uh, another project is Wikilove's Beep. Uh, Beep means library in, uh, in Dutch. Um, it's a project to teaching the teachers, so uh, we can go out and uh, uh, learn people how to use Wikipedia, but we don't have the resources for that. So w what we're doing in, uh, in, the, uh, in Vlissingen, it's in the southern part of the Netherlands, is uh, we're trying to teach the teachers, so making a learning program so other libraries can also teach their, uh, their people who are coming by to how to use Wikipedia. So that way we hope we can scale. Uh, because of, we have good context there in uh, Flissingen, uh, we have all these spin-off projects. For example, there's a, a local museum there, it's called Museum. It's like um, a sea in the Netherlands and it has a large collection of uh, Michiel de Ruiter paintings and all the, uh, other old paintings. 
and uh, they're also involved in local heritage in Vlissingen. So, for example, last year when we had Weekly Lost Monuments, they themselves organized a local event in Vlissingen. We didn't have to do anything for that. It was really uh, great. Uh, the Amsterdam Museum, it's the historical museum of Amsterdam. Um, it's uh, located in the center of Amsterdam. They have this big collection of, uh, of, uh, of paintings and also uh, everyday materials. Uh, they hosted our Wikipedia Zen party uh, in uh, January. And uh, also we had several boot camps with them to teach their empl uh, employees and uh, other people involved in the museum uh, how to use Wikipedia, to edit articles, to upload images. And they basically released their whole collection under a, a free license in January. Uh, it's a lot of old paints like this. For example, the Nightwatch or the Nachtwacht. It's, it's in the Rijt Museum, but it's also part of their collection. So that gives you an impression of what all the paintings they have. I just picked some uh, random ones I, uh, I liked. Um, and this is a new one, a Museum Boerhaven. It's a museum of uh, a science museum. Uh, they have a lot of uh, instruments from the 17th and 18th century and also 19th. So that, the left ones are a bit newer, this one are older, they have this huge collection of scientific instruments you never knew existed. It's a bit like the Science Museum in London, if you ever see that. And um, we're, uh, they just want to put it out there. They're a really small museum, their funding is uh, getting, uh, probably getting cut, so they, they want to show their stuff around while they're still there. One of the cool things in their collection is they have a lot of animations of how all these instruments work. It's uh, just an animation, so no sound or subtitles, so it's language neutral. And they want to release these uh, to the commons so we can use them in Wikipedia articles. Uh, of course, the, the clearing is going to be a, a problem. That's always a problem with movies, but we'll, uh, we'll manage. And we're looking into other projects. They, for example, they have this huge medical library, but it's not about current medicine, but about medicine uh, 100 years ago. So uh, the history of medicine is really important for, for this museum. And of course, we don't have a lot of articles about that yet. And they have the, uh, huge resources. And they want to help us with that. The RCA is the Rijksdienst voor Cultureel Erfgoed. That means like uh, the government service of uh, cultural heritage. It's the government agency in, in charge of uh, uh, buildings, monumental buildings, to uh, keep track of them and to hand out the status. Um, they uh, provided us a, a database of all the monuments to be used on uh, Wikipedia. This was the start for us for uh, what would later become Wikilove's monuments. Uh, but they're uh, now uh, expanding that. The whole thing of doing things freely uh, is really entering that organization. So. Uh, they have uh, their, and their whole uh, image bank. They always had photographers running around the country seeing if buildings are still there and not burned down or something like that, taking photos. And they're working on freely licensing the, these photos so they can be used on the, on the internet and also on Wikipedia. And what's also nice is they wrote a lot of. Uh, uh, the, the way they uh, manage their monuments differs over time. So we had this workshop a couple of weeks ago where they explained their system. Like in the 60s, there were really uh, one line describing house with uh, yellow door, for example. And so in the 70s, the, this changed and they got this huge descriptions, like several pages describing the history, the owners, whatever. And uh, they're now uh, working on releasing all these records. So uh, we're probably going to use that to uh, start articles at uh, Dutch Wikipedia, maybe also in other languages, because it's such a wealth of information. Um, Wikilove's Monuments, I'm not going to tell about it. We have a session about that on, on Saturday. But uh, they, without them, that wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be possible. So. What are we going to do next? We, um, we have a, in the Netherlands, we have a lot of uh, so-called content donation, so a lot of images for, uh, for the commons. And that's a bit of a monoculture. So uh, we're looking into doing other things, too, like uh, in other countries, you have the in residence or, uh, or edit on, or we're not sure about what we are able to pull off. Most of the partners are interested in doing other things, but 
and we'll see if we can make it happen. And it's quite important. I don't know how it is in other countries, but in, ne in the Netherlands, it, it seems to be that free licensing your uh, images is, beco is becoming the standard. Uh, the, the national government changed all their websites in uh, CC0. Uh, a lot of museums are looking. Uh, CC0 is uh, the Creative Commons license to indicate that something you want to release something into the public domain. So do whatever you want with it. Most museums are. Uh, looking into uh, licensing their work under uh, a CC license, a Creative Commons license. And it's slowly go going into mainstream to work with free imagery and free content. And that's probably the most important thing, because uh, if it's free, it will end up in, uh, in, uh, in uh, maybe on Commons or in some other project and make it, uh, makes it possible for people to reuse it. Um, we have some scalability problems. Um, uh, it's a, a very small group doing all the glam stuff, and we're uh, looking into um, getting more people involved. And uh, yeah, to be able to handle all the requests, we have uh, plenty of museums uh, who want to work with us, but we have to say no. Sorry, we we don't have the time. We uh, uh, we're all full, and I'd rather do one museum a good project than four a crappy project. Uh, and metrics. Uh, that's um, so we have all these images on the comments, but we can't really tell them uh, how many users are viewing them or how many hits they got, or and uh, that makes it really difficult uh, to convince other people to also freely license uh, and their uh, their contents or their metadata. Um, and uh, we're here to stay. So the Dutch uh, Wikimedia chapter is actively going to conferences, speaking at conferences, going to meetups. Uh, we're really uh, getting into the whole heritage world in the Netherlands, and uh, people know who we are and know to contact us when you have something to do. So that's all you can. Uh, that's the way you can contact me. Thanks, Martin. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead with the uh, Palace of Versailles and Wikimedia Projects with Benoit. And uh, then last, we'll have Liam. We didn't forget him. He'll just be at the end. Hello, everybody. Uh, I will try to make, make a presentation with uh, good English, but I'm French, so. Uh, I will present you what I've done on the Wikimedia, for, for Wikimedia project in uh, the Palace of Versailles. So I think everybody knows where is the Palace of Versailles and uh, what does it represent. It's a very, very big part of French history, and uh, it's a very, very big museum. So I have got the great pleasure to be uh, a Wikipedia in residence in six months uh, at uh, the Palace of Versailles. And uh, next week will be my final, uh, my final week. So uh, why did we make uh, a, a residence in Versailles? It was, at the beginning, it was a partner, it's a partnership between Wikimedia France and uh, the, Chate the Chateau de Versailles. Uh, we have the same idea and the same mission. We are here to share knowledge. So uh, we just, the, the only thing we can do was to meet each other and make things together. Uh, for Versailles, they would like, they want to give to uh, the public a very accurate, uh, accurate information. So um, they, they would like uh, the public to have very good articles, uh, to read very info very interesting information. So uh, we try to, to make things together. And they want to get uh, an autonomy. They, they want to be able to contribute on Wikipedia, on Wikimedia project, uh, to help people, help contributors, help volunteers to, to contribute about uh, the palace. So during this, uh, this residency, it just was the first step of a, a longer cooperation. We have uh, a partnership, so we will try to, to make it uh, very strong and very, very long. 
During this uh, six months, uh, I've made a lot of things. Uh, I've uh, explained, I've uh, scheduled a lot of uh, ideas, a lot of things to do. It was not really easy to, to make it because six months is very short at the time. Uh, I, we will try to, to, to continue after that, but uh, we have a lot of, uh, of places, a lot of things, a lot of rooms to discover, and a lot of subjects to cover. So uh, we, we have to continue because it's not finished. I don't think it's like Wikipedia. Uh, talking about the Palace of Versailles is like Wikipedia. You can't finish it one day. So during this uh, residency, it was not a Wikipedia. Wikipedia uh, in residence, it was a Wikimedia in residence because I've worked on three different projects, uh, which are Wikipedia, Wikimedia, and uh, Wikimedia Commons and Wikisource. Uh, we try to, to, to share the knowledge on the most way we can. So first we worked on, uh, on Wikipedia. It was the biggest project because, as you know, Wikipedia is the most famous website of the Wikimedia Foundation project. Uh, we have, uh, I have, uh, during my residency, uh, I didn't really write articles. I only uh, help people. I share sources. I, uh, I help them to access to resources, to meet some uh, curators, some uh, research researchers. Uh, but uh, I try to, to make it fun. I try to, uh, sorry. I try, I try to, to help them and uh, make some challenges. Uh, we've made a, a funny challenge, which was uh, to make an article, to improve an article during 24 hours. It works very well. Uh, we have made uh, yesterday a translation, uh, translation challenge uh, with uh, the other Glam residents. It was also a great success. So uh, this community is very, very strong. We have about uh, 50 people which work, uh, who work uh, on it, uh, coming from France, Europe, and the uh, Dominican Republic and Australia. Uh, we start with uh, 70 articles, and uh, right now we have about uh, 300, 380 uh, articles. It's very, really very great. Uh, we also work on commons. Uh, I was uh, here to help, uh, help people. Uh, we have some special tours. You imagine uh, in this big palace, there's a lot of people, a lot of visitors, so we, we are able to close some place uh, places, some areas, to take uh, some picture with special uh, special material, and uh, we try to we try to illustrate as well as we can uh, the article. So uh, I have there is in Versailles uh, now there is a service of uh, re requested for uh, picture. If you need uh, a picture of uh, one painting or one furniture or one place, you can ask. And then I take the picture, and I hope somebody will take them uh, when I will leave. Uh, it's really comfortable because when you are not in the palace and which, when you write an article, if you want to have uh, a good picture, you can ask somebody to do it for you. We are also working on Wikisource. Uh, the librarian of the, the palace has a big problem. She has some books she never sees because they are always taken by uh, the curators. So she, she makes a list and we try to put it on Wikisource so the curators can use it online instead of having the old books which are not uh, really in good shape. Uh, and, uh, working in Versailles is really exciting. Uh, I try to give you one typical day okay. in this place. Uh, I've spent a lot of time to help people. The biggest problem is about Wikipedia and Wikimedia project is uh, they are not easy to use. A lot of people give me this, this idea. Uh, they would like to, to do it. They would like to make the first step. They make the first step. They create an icon. They modify one or two lines and then they stop because they are not able to do this by themselves. Uh, we try to make some resources, we try to make some 
things to help them, but it not, was not easy. Uh, my biggest work was to help people, uh, people from the palace and beginners, but it was the same problem with beginners. When they start to, to make something, it didn't continue, it was not easy to do, how to put a reference, how to, to quote something, not really easy. We have to make it really easier because things are too difficult. Uh, and I have also, during my, my, my days, uh, a rule which is impossible to respect. Never write anything. Uh, because if I start to write an article, for example, for somebody, other will ask me. It's, easy when some, it's easier if somebody uh, has the, the tools to make it. If somebody can write an article, uh, I can't have time to explain to another. So uh, a lot of people in the palace try to, to convince me to write articles, but I, I always refuse. Uh, so we lost, I think we lost some article by this way, but uh, if, I, if I write for everybody, I don't think it would be better. So, uh, this was a presentation about what we do. It was very short. But uh, now we, the next step is, was it good? Was, was it a good idea? Is it useful? Uh, what do we have to do now? What is the next step? I think this project and uh, the residency system is just starting to grow. Versailles is really a big place, very, really, really big. We just start things. We're just making small steps and we are trying to improve them. Uh, there is a lot of rooms. We didn't see a lot of furniture. We didn't see a lot of statue. We didn't see. Uh, we have uh, a great, great work about uh, the, the article. There is a big progress about quality. Uh, there is a lot of new sources. Uh, the, they are more accurate, but uh, they are not at the top level as they can be. So we have to continue. Uh, I have also a big problem with uh, the contributors. They, people from Wikipedia, for example, told me, no, no, I will, I will not work about Versailles because I'm not comfortable with architecture, I'm not comfortable with uh, history. So it was not easy to motivate them. But when we make some challenges like the 24 hours uh, challenge, uh, I've told you before, sorry. Uh, they, they managed to make very big and very, very accurate uh, work. You give to them some sources, they take them and they make an article. It was really great. So I don't think uh, when you are in residence, you have to make really fun if you want to, uh, if you want the, the community to be involved in this. In Versailles, I have also another problem. They always told me I didn't have enough time. I'm not able to, to write articles. I'm not able to see people. Uh, that's true because uh, there, are, there, there is really few people for this big, big place. Uh, and Wikipedia was not really a priority for every, everybody. But uh, we have a strong support from the chairman of uh, the palace, so it was easy to convince people to, to work with us. And uh, the, final, the final problem with community was the obstacle of language. Uh, we have, uh, this project was also made quite only in French uh, because all, most of resources are in French and because uh, we don't work in the same manner on each Wikipedia. We have the same five pillars but after that, it's not easy to, to work together. We don't, we don't quote as the same, same manner. We, didn't have, we don't have the same uh, references system. We don't write uh, with the same, uh, we don't write the, uh, with the same, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we, do, we don't have the same way to work, that's it. Uh, so it was uh, three difficult about community. And for France, uh, I think Glam don't know us really well. 
it's the beginning. We we have start uh, we have started with uh, our conference we've made on uh, December two two thousand ten, but uh, people don't know how Wikimedia works, what we do, what we want to do. Some curators, for example, told me, but if I if I wrote on Wikipedia, I will not be able to publish my book. No, it's not like that. Uh, I have to explain them. Uh, they are not in competition with volunteers. They can make it. They can make a work together. Uh, for example, some uh, a researcher uses Wikipedia as a book note. He puts on Wikipedia what do he wants to search and then to write his book. He takes it on Wikipedia. Uh, he knows where, in which books he has to choose to to pick his information. Uh, sorry. Uh, da -da 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 -da, so. I'm very sorry, I'm not very comfortable to speak in English. Uh, yes, uh, I think people from Versailles are now able to talk with their colleagues on other glam, for example, and told them Wikipedia is not very a uh, bad thing, Wikipedia is not a strange thing. You can work with them. And in France, I think it's the beginning of a new era. We are just starting to be comfortable with all glam. And then uh, they know Wikimedia project more and more uh, with, with they, they know more and more Wikipedia projects. So they are able to, to make it uh, uh, make a, a work better with us. So uh, if Glam are interested, they just need help because, as I told later, uh, it's not easy to use a Wikimedia project. So uh, all chapters don't have the time, don't have the resources to, to be able to have somebody in residence or to help all Glam. Uh, we have to be able to help them to contribute by themselves. Uh, they have to be independent. They, I think the glam movement will win, will win when uh, everybody, every glam in the world will be able to contribute by himself to Wikimedia project. <laughs> so Versailles in France was the first big step we've made. Uh, I don't know if we will make another residency, but uh, I hope we will try. We will manage to to go to help them to be uh, to to make some autonomous autonomy uh, to to work alone <laughs> without us. Uh, for the final one, final slide, I would like to thank thank you very much to Wikimedia France and the Chateau de Versailles which uh, permit to me to be in, in residence. All glam residents all over the world, uh, we share a lot of what we do and we try to make things together. It was really great. And of course, all the contributors of this project because without the Wikimedia community from all over the world, it was not possible to, to make it. So uh, with this, you can have, you can contact me if you want more information and uh, for the question, I think we will do it, it after Liam's presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, for the last one for this session, we'll have uh, Liam giving his talk about what, what to expect next in, in GLAM. So, and then we'll have a a short question time afterwards. All right. Uh, full screen mode. Okay. Uh, so, what next in Glam? Last year, I got up here and talked about what I did at the British Museum. And I'm super pleased that now there are a whole team of people that we've been hearing about doing residencies and similar things around the world. And I'm also super pleased that every year we do this, the room they give us gets bigger. <laughs> so I remember in, in uh, Buenos Aires, Matthias Schindler, who is there somewhere, um, 
and I gave presentations about working with the cultural sector. And then the year after in Gdansk, there was a session about cultural outreach. And then now we have one session every day. And then next year, Wikimania in DC is the whole theme of the conference is glam. Yes. So we're taking over the world one wiki at a time. <laughs> All your glam are belong to wiki. <laughs> So after my uh, residency at the British Museum, the Wikimedia Foundation agreed to let me try and do a fellowship for a year to increase the capacity of the Wikimedia movement generally to do this. So this is part of my contract with the Wikimedia Foundation for the year, that I will seek to help the Wikimedia movement to develop scalable systems and approaches to work with the cultural sector worldwide. The fellowship will be considered successful if the Wikimedia movement has demonstrably and measurably grown in its ability to plan and execute partnerships with cultural institutions and in its shared understanding which and in its shared understanding, which types of partnerships are likely to have the best impact. Uh, the Cultural Partnerships Fellow is accountable to the community. My boss is the community. I don't report to anyone at the foundation specifically. I don't know what that means in practice other than this is my annual report now. Uh, but the, the interesting part of that fellowship is, is really that I'm not the Wikimedia Foundation is not directly doing glam. Glam is a chapter thing, mostly. And yet I'm being paid by the Wikimedia Foundation to support glam without being the boss of glam, so, which is a really <laughs> difficult line to, th to, to tread. So these were the, um, the priorities that I was given for the year. Uh, a leaf organization, documentation, that's fairly obvious, how to do things, why to do things, best practices. Communication, so systems for better communication in different modes, internally amongst ourselves and to outreach communication. Training, so both in the practical, a very uh, uh, hard sense of training, actual workshops, or better understanding of best practices and the law about uh, public domain, for example, or issues of, of um, practice in GLAMs around the world. Technology, the software, the tools, the things that we do, metrics, uh, and make sure that we can catalog them and use them and that they exist. Uh, events, run stuff, attend things, go to things and help people do events, small and large, in-reach and outreach. Organization, the first one, is the most vague because that's coordinate, facilitate a movement and, and try and make it self-sustaining and um, managing it, running and, and with a momentum of its own. And one of the best ways of killing that momentum is if People thought that I was, I had to give permission to do anything in GLAM, or that if I was the controller of this stuff would be the best way to make sure no one did anything. So to summarize, my job was to coordinate and support the movement in this field without being the boss, to design and implement systems, technological, social, uh, without any budget or staff, and to build capacity and our community without owning any of that. Uh, so I finished in four months. It was December until December. And the measure of success that I rank this fellowship on is whether I can stop doing everything and no one notices. <laughs> so it's a... <laughs> You want to get rid of me? <laughs> so the idea is not to try and increase the level of uh, infrastructure simply for the sake of creating infrastructure, uh, or have more staff or employees simply for the sake of having more employees, because that's the best way to do it. I think there should be more employees and more infrastructure, but to improve the quality of the purpose, the mission, not just because more is better. So I want to demonstrate, uh, before I get to recommendations, I want to demonstrate some of the proof that I think that 
criteria of success, th this one, you know, the measurably grow in its ability to plan and execute partnerships and share understanding and so forth, in a couple of ways. One, I want to demonstrate momentum. Last year there was one resident, me, now we have at least a half a dozen and they are doing, they are in different kinds of institutions, small, large, museums, archives, uh, and they're doing really interesting, innovative things, each of them. So we've heard about Bonnois and Versailles. The Children's Museum in Indianapolis, uh, Laurie is here, she'll be presenting later on, um, is doing really interesting things with a variety of things, but one of them is apprentice programs with school kids teaching them how to learn about museum practice using the mechanism of Wikipedia. Um, Derby Museum, uh, where are you, yeah. Roger? Up the back? Oh, right up the back. Uh, which is a regional museum in England. They have been innovating really cool stuff with QR codes, these codes. They go to, you can put those on the label of the object in, in the museum collection, scan that with your phone, and it will take you to the Wikipedia article about that thing in the language of your phone, automatically. So it's a really cheap way for a museum to create documentation for their visitors if they don't want to write whole brochures in 20 languages, for example. Um, National Archives have a very cool document of the day transcription and sharing process and we have several others and I, I, I cannot give justice to everyone's projects. We also have content partnerships. This is just some of the content partnerships that Martin has been talking about before in Europe and other continents as well. There are many kinds of ways of working with the cultural sector. This is just two of them but I'd like, I think they demonstrate a a broad momentum that is within the community generally, not just a centralized thing, that people are innovating cool stuff and that that cool stuff is being passed around to each other as a community of practice. One of the other things I've been doing is lots of outreach. So you can see me here. Uh, in the middle there, second row from the middle. This is at a conference in Belarus, at the National Library of Belarus, where uh, these are all librarians from developing and transitional countries around the world who came together to talk about the particular issues of national libraries and public libraries in developing countries. So my job, I was invited to speak that at that conference about how Wikipedia can be involved in that because it is really one of the best things they could do to find a project, an education project, that is not just a Western country telling them how to do education and outreach in their own country, but it's actually a community in their own country, in their own language. So we were able, I was able to meet at that conference, and this is just one example. Uh, people from the National Library of Mongolia, uh, Uganda, and Georgia each had some really interesting ideas they wanted to do. And the Georgia National Library hosted the Wiki 10 party in Georgia. This is a really great way of galvanizing some, some um, glam outreach and cultural coordination in a country through the mechanism of Wikipedia. Uh, also, I've been doing a lot of in-reach, you know, meeting communities around the world. This is an event we had in New York called Glam Camp where we brought a bunch of Wikipedians to the, to the uh, city to try and get a community, more of a community together within ourselves, not doing outreach necessarily, but how can we work as a community better? Uh, who was at that conference? Woo! Yeah, all down the front here, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> and who have I um, personally visited your country and met your meetup in the last two years or so? A lot of places, I, so I've been trying to meet a lot of people and help share the information from one to the next. We also have better communication. We have This Month in Glam. This is the only newsletter in the Wikiverse that is cross-project, cross-language. It's, it's not just English Wikipedia, for example. It's all languages, all Wikimedia projects. And it's, which is really cool, you know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and we also have the mailing list, which is really active. No, but that, <laughs> so, active, so active that some people think it's too active. But it's, I, really, I particularly like this mailing list. Of all the Wikimedia mailing lists, it is both active 
and has a high signal to noise ratio. Right? So it's very rare that you can get a, a very active mailing list where there is no trolling. Yay. And people don't agree, but they can debate actively and, and really have a good communication going on. We're developing a good community of practice in this, uh, which, is, which I think is fantastic. And it's also the only mailing list, I think, I think, where people from different areas of the Wikiverse, so not just different languages, but technology and good quality article writers and uh, photographers and chapter people are all talking in the one place. We have lots of good documentation, not as good as we would like, but, but it's getting there. We have better than nothing, which is what we had before. Right? So we have success stories from around the world and how you can get involved yourself as a Wikipedian or as a new GLAM person. And we have a whole hub of, of uh, this documentation at glamwiki.org, which is what that goes to. And that is a living on the outreach wiki. We also have now, so. That's my kind of very quick summary of the state of GLAM now. And we have a lot of chapters are trying to invest in it financially or some time and effort in this. I really like that this year in Berlin at the annual chapters conference, every single chapter was given three minutes to summarize their activities. Every single one of them gave once a slide or a mention to what they were doing in GLAM, what they were doing in cultural outreach which is the only thing that was completely consistent. Some talked about education or this or that. They all talked about cultural outreach, which I think is fantastic. So my recommendations for 2012. This is the Mayan long calendar, which ends in 2012. The end of days is, will be this year. One, I want to see more glam camps, more active uh, in-reach activities, in real life events. I think we proved that a specific focus event so not just Wikimania as a, as a everything conference, but a specific conference, was successful. And it's no secret that the Dutch are interested in hosting uh, the next one. So I would recommend that we do that. I think that's a great idea, and I really want to help them do that. And equally, if other chapters want to get up and do things coordinated way, equally the Dutch are doing Wikiloves Monuments as well, heading that. Fantastic. Two, I would like to encourage chapters and local groups that don't have chapters, or not, countries that don't have chapters, to create a system of national coordination to recruit, train, and support a network of GLAM coordinators in their local area. It's not about being the boss of GLAM in your country, but about finding people in local areas and supporting them. It's the equivalent of what the education team are doing in, with the campus ambassadors. Now, we tried GLAM ambassadors, but that was really a one-size-fits-all model. So we, we need to find a way that's working in different countries in different kinds of ways to have a network of GLAM people across the country. Because as it's been said, we really don't have the capacity to deal with the number of institutions who want to work with us. Two years ago, we had the problem of trying to find museums that would, um, art galleries that would be willing to work with us. Now we have the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Louvre on the waiting list. We need to develop some capacity at the national level for this. This is my first big recommendation from, for the Wikimedia Foundation. Is there anyone from the Wikimedia Foundation here? Good. Thank you. Please report this back to them. Uh, the foundation has created a position recently for OTRS specifically, but could be general, and I want to, I want to modify it for GLAM, of the community liaison. The idea is that it's a, a person, the position exists, but the person changes every six months or every year to bring people in and out of the foundation to coordinate and support in a structured way, just like what I've been doing this year. But I would like that so I would like the position that I have now as a one-year fellowship to be turned into an ongoing community liaison glam role with a new person each year or thereabouts. And I think that's considering the scale of the stuff that we're doing in cultural outreach, that's a very small amount of investment to ask for. 
relative to the other kinds of projects that the foundation is doing. I granted this is not about new user retention, which is the main priority of the Wikimedia Foundation, but I think we've proved that GLAM is active and c the community wants this enough to justify that kind of support at the global level. And I think the chapters would, would agree that that's not trying to take over the responsibility. My fourth recommendation, and this is a big one, is some kind of centralized technology. We've had the same requests for a long time on for the same things. Like everyone is asking for the same stuff and we've tried to do it as volunteer driven my upload script or your upload script. We have as many upload scripts for mass mass upload to commons as we have mass uploaders. And they all have a bit of voodoo and most of them are run by Martin Dummers. <laughs> I think we need to replace Martin Thomas, or at least we shouldn't have to rely on the goodwill of individual, very talented people to be able to sustain a museum coming to us and say, I have 100,000 photographs, please take them. As Martin was saying, we need to get them to be able to do it themselves. And I think we've demonstrated, despite all the goodwill, that it is not possible to do these things without some serious investment financially and some serious professional long-term development in this field. And I've asked the Wikimedia Foundation if they would be willing to do it, and they said, no, we haven't got the, it's not a problem of money, it's a problem of organizational capacity. It's a good idea, but they just don't have the spare recruiting time and organizational time. Other chapters that have the money, Equally, everyone is full. We are full, there's too many things to do, and this is just not, and I agree, this is not the top priority. It's just a top priority for GLAM. So what I'm trying to do here is get a major um, organization in this field to write a grant proposal to a chapter, to its national chapter, and the chapter will then work with them to make it uh, a good and transparent and politically uh, correct procedure. So it's not just us giving a lot of money to a private company or a, a glam to do stuff that, because we like them, but it has to be transparent. And then I believe this is where the, fa the chapters can actually, especially the chapters that have an interest in glam and have money from the fundraiser, can actually coordinate and co-fund this stuff. And the chapters can actually say, look at what we built. We've built a system to mass upload to Wikimedia to Commons that the museum can do for itself, that has good metadata support, import and export, where the museum can actually, or the library or archive, can actually find out for themselves and quickly how many times their images are being used and where the people are coming from or how many to, has the metadata been changed and can they export that metadata back into their own database. These are really big questions and I think, I think the chapters would like to coalesce around this topic and say, you know, we can own this uh, because we've never really had successful collaboration, co-funding projects before and I think this can be it. We need to not reinvent the wheel and create a new metadata standard, but we do have all of these tools that exist already. And we need to, so we have cool things, we just need to make them work and pretty and that the museums can do them for themselves. Finally, there is one country that is uh, very active in GLAM that doesn't actually have any ability as a country to decide whether or not it will invest in GLAM. Uh, lots of countries, for example Australia, where I'm from, has a chapter that is interested in GLAM and we have decided with the chapter funds and decisions, strategic decisions, how much we will invest in that topic. Money and time and, and interest. America, because it has no chapter and because GLAM is a chapter thing, generally speaking, doesn't actually have the right to, or the ability to say how much they will invest in GLAM, and is entirely dependent upon little individual one-off grants from the foundation to do an event here, or a, a party there, or a thing here and there. I would like to see, in the absence of a USA chapter, 
the foundation fund a, a USA Glam Fellow, either as a, uh, a grant to Wikimedia New York City or Wikimedia the DC community, or either did they just fund it directly for themselves, to coordinate all of the really good stuff that's happening in America, but because there is no chapter in America, it's not being supported. And I think that, I, I also think that the chapters will, would agree this is a, a good idea and is not the foundation trying to become the USA chapter because it's something that I think the other chapters would have you know, asked for and, and recommend and the, the New York and DC and American glam communities are asking for it too. Uh, so that's the two main things that I'm asking of the Wikimedia Foundation. Finally, <laughs> tonight, if you're interested in some more uh, proactive glam activities, there is an Irish pub down the road, down near, um, down near the hotels. There's a small one, and then there's a larger one about a block further down the road. Come along to that, and we'll try and make sure that they only play glam rock all night. <laughs> so party, glam party tonight. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to all the presenters. And um, so we had three examples from different countries, uh, each developing some of the cultural uh, knowledge there. And then Liam's wonderful talk about the future in general. Uh, we have about eight minutes or so now for any questions, uh, so, yes. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you could speak quite loudly. I will use my best German voice. <laughs> Say it again. My name is Roger Bamkin. Mm -hmm. I'm from the UK. Um, Liam, yeah. it's really a matter of information. Um, I've just read a, a note from the lady of the British Museum posted our work on the Hotly Challenge. She's asking me about how she can edit her article, which is about a pop band in Catalan. My point is... What? <laughs> <laughs> my point is, we are gathering new users by GLAM. Yes, yeah. GLAM is creating new users, and Outreach Museum is creating new users who are really good quality users. These are the curators. These are the best kinds of users we could possibly get. But it is not the primary purpose of GLAM outreach to create new users. If you had to put it in one category of the Wikimedia Foundation's strategic priorities, it would be increased quality. Um, yes, it creates new articles as well. Uh, so it is a bit about reach and a bit about increased size. But this is about the relentless pursuit of improved quality. Um, and it is fantastic when we can keep a curator or two as well. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I had a question about how do you prioritize finding partners to, uh, you know, as you said, there's now the Louvre and, and the Museum of Modern Art that are all on the waiting list. How can you, how do you choose what opportunities to pursue best? And anybody? Uh, in France, we just uh, take uh, every, every opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, the same in uh, other countries. Uh, we, 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 we can select them, but uh, they, they all have uh, the right to access to our, our project. They all have the right to, 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 to learn how to, to work with us. So I don't think we, we have to, to select them or uh, to make a choice. Maybe it's also that we don't really select, uh, say no, we can't do it, but it's more like we won't pursue it. If you get an email from someone, hey, can we do a project, and you uh, reply right away, uh, you, you indicate uh, you're interested, or you do a follow-up meeting or some, uh, something else. But if you already have a lot of projects, you uh, leave the email uh, be for a couple of days, or maybe ask someone else, and that's not really uh, helping if uh, you want to do a partnership. 
Oh, oh, sorry. I would say that we decide for what to do next on the basis of the weakest link, which is the number of people in our community. At the moment, the weakest link is the, the technology, as I was saying, and the number of people in our community who are qualified, who are willing and able to do that. So we need more people who are, who are interested in doing this kind of thing and supporting that. My question is whether there are any plans to, do, to go beyond <laughs> glam and a bit into science. Uh, so far there was no science museum involved. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, uh, for those who don't, well, I'm, I'm Daniel Meachin, the, um, the comedian in residence on open science and open access. And, and I'm really interested in, uh, yeah, bringing science into the glam community or uh, in, uh, increasing the interaction between the two. That's why first question would be whether there are already any actions in this regard. And if not, then I would really be happy to discuss any options. Uh, the Boerhaave Museum is a science museum. It's old science, okay. but so that's an example. Uh, just, just in like Washington, I, I consider GLAM like to be broader to include like we have the National Institutes of Health, which back in like 2009 the foundation did like like a uh, wiki academy there, and and as we have a capacity, would love to do more of that like with like or, or like NASA that would be cool like like there's like I mean infinite possibilities, but we need capacity. Glam is galleries, libraries, archives, museums, but I think it can, that should not be ever considered to be the limiting number of kinds of things we can do. It, it spreads into uh, zoos, into botanical gardens, into universities to a certain degree, and science research institutes. So really, I would not want these principles, ideas, the Wikipedia in residence brand to be exclusive to just art museums. We need to share it around. Let's just illustrate something, I guess. Um, <laughs> sorry. Who are you? Don't. You don't know me. Um, John Fred, uh, user John Frederick, I'm from Wikimedia France, uh, involved in uh, GLAM partnerships. What are you doing, you? Um, <coughs> I work with monuments, yeah. And uh, I'm a multi chill apprentice on comics or something. <laughs> uh, about science, uh, well, in France, we've been going, uh, we've, we have an ongoing partnership with the Museum of Toulouse, which is, uh, let's not be hard science as you might expect, but we have archaeology. Uh, mineralogy, um, entomology, the thing? Entomology. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Just keep forgetting. So you can check on comments. This is called, uh, this code name Project Phoebus, and we have high quality images of minerals and uh, dead butterflies and <laughs> more <laughs> bones. And <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound very awesome like this, but it is. And yeah, awesome pictures, ready. And we are also in touch with, uh, I'm not sure if I'm a liberty disc, is it uh, uh, CNAM? Well, yeah, whatever. Yes, we, uh, we are in touch with the uh, Museum of, uh, Musée des Arts et Métiers, the Museum of Crafts, Artcraft, Art -craft and cool. yeah, well, whatever, uh, which is uh, <laughs> a bit not hard science, but also a science museum as well in France. So we are, um, it's in you know, the pipes, and we'll be glad to discuss it with you. Maybe with a few more of those ologies, you could expand it to be glamorous. Just fill it all out there, yeah. But, uh, up in the back, if you could speak loudly. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Tom Morris. I wanted to expand on that, that question, um, which is, is it possible that glam can be moved beyond the office space? Because currently it's a lot of objects. Okay, so. <laughs> beyond objects. So is it possible to move from just physical objects and data to more theories and things a little more abstract? I think Sarah wants to talk about this as well. But, but yeah, of course. Um, this, the simplest and most um, traditionally popular kind of GLAM partnership has been mass upload to Wikipedia, uh, to Commons. And that remains a very important thing we can do. And that's a lot of the time, that's lots of pictures of things or of paintings. And that's great. But I think a much more, a deeper thing is. Mm -hmm. 
but moving from objects to theories and subjects, because those areas are harder to nail down, makes them all the more valid and worthwhile to do, especially with the curators and experts on those topic areas. So the big thing for next year with the British Museum, for example, uh, last year was my residency. We did a ed big edit-a-thon around an object collection, a hoard of Roman gold and silver coins. Next year, we're doing the same kind of thing in collaboration with the, a major museum in India, so it's you know, cross-cultural as well, on the Ice Age and Ice Age art. Mm which is a subject area. Uh, and um, Sarah is also working with um, the American Indian Museum in the Smithsonian. Yeah, I just, I just want to say, I, most of my own personal work and interest in regards to um, Glam Wiki is about concept, idea, and collaborate partnerships, whatever word we use to describe it. Um, I, I am at the Smithsonian, which is a federal institution, as I'm sure some of the other residents here and um, volunteers can relate that it takes a lot of work to get a federal institution to give up anything. I don't focus on image donations. I focus on fostering relationships between Wikipedians and staff, teaching staff, of course, to contribute a bit, but to teach Wikipedians how to utilize what are you guys doing? It's like the most unruly family ever. <laughs> yes, party crasher. Um, so anyway, um, uh, but like my, my own work, like Liam mentioned again with um, the National Museum of American Indian, is outreach. How can we bring Wikimedia to indigenous communities, cultural organizations, in order to help broaden awareness about um, what these communities choose to share with Wikipedia? Um, uh, I'm more into theory and ideas and partnerships, and um, it's going to take a long time for the Smithsonian to give up images. <laughs> and the first thing people always ask me is, when's the Smithsonian going to give us images of stuff? And I just don't. I, it's not something I think about. And I know a few British other people Museum. probably Same have, thing with British Museum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing in Versailles. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Pete has a question. Oh, yeah. Uh, just a point of clarification, uh, for Liam, you had, you had talked about the term glam ambassadors. Yep. Is that a term that is not going to be used anymore, or is, the, is it just I the <laughs> idea of it? Uh, I think the French should answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's for me then. Uh, this was a system that, uh, when Liam started his fellowship, this was a system that was suggested as a model, a uh, worldwide model for uh, um, structuring GLAMs. And, well, the conclusion that I wasn't in GLAM camp, but I guess it was that it, yeah, you, you, you said it, this was the one size fits all and uh, some countries were not very happy with that. So uh, I think the, uh, the idea of a global model for that, I think, is uh, dropped out, I guess. What we tried to, uh, the Glam Ambassador as a concept worked well for some and it didn't work for others. And I, and I had to come to the, some conclusion eventually that it seemed to work less well for more than people that it worked well for. So it was on, on balance not helpful but so we change it from being glam ambassador to being simply local contact which is the same idea and can involve any layer of any different um, level of formality or individual or a chapter or a group of volunteers a professional of uh, highly trained or not and it would be great if we could get some kind of national international consensus on what that means but i'd much prefer that we're just doing it rather than arguing about whose system is better to do I'm just going to sit up here now. Um, oh, fine message. I actually use the title Glam Ambassador. Um, if you've gotten an email from me, it says it at the bottom. Um, I've noticed in my work and my outreach um, uh, opportunities that in the United States, it helps me. People go, well, what, are you just a Wikipedian? Yeah, but I'm a Glam Cultural Ambassador um, for the foundation. So in the States, people go, ooh, you're not just editing articles. You have a fancy title. Um, so when we were at Glam Camp, we got into it about ambassadors and the concepts. And so it's all kind of an individual idea, but you know, whatever. Okay, well, the, the session time is officially over, so. Um, <laughs> Can I say one more thing? I think the, <laughs> just because I can. Um, you are the boss. I, no, I'm not the boss, that's the point. <laughs> that um, I think it's demonstrably that, that Glam has all the cool kids in Wikimedia. <laughs> oh, that's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, and everyone wishes that they were part of Glam. So we should we should you know keep all that. That's that's really good. And I'd like to give all the people who write who come and present to Glam activities this uh, week. Um, so that makes one for you. Uh, this lovely uh, keep Glam and rock on coffee mug. Yes. <laughs> Drag Lori. This is Lori, the Wikipedia in residence at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. So she'll be presenting. <laughs> She's killing me just knowing that I brought her up here. So thank you. Okay, thank you all. Uh, if we could have one last round of applause for the presenters, and uh, enjoy your break. <laughs> the next session starts in 25 minutes.